Okay, but really though, why is it fourth town when there's five of them? Hello everyone, welcome back to The Truth Doctor Show. My name is Dr. Courtney Tracy. I'm known as The Truth Doctor. And on this show, I talk about the world through a mental health lens using pop culture and the media as my medium. I have heard a lot about turning red. And honestly, I am obsessed with Pixar movies. I love the movie Up. I love the movie Soul, the movie Inside Out. They have a really great way of not only teaching lessons to the children that watch the shows. I think sometimes these themes are broken down sort of simplistically in a good way for parents to be paying attention to too. And for adults in general, I've heard that there's been a little bit of controversy around this movie. And I did a little bit of research to see like, what were the opinions so that I could have a more informed response for you all. I want to say that for those of you that watched my reaction to the Will Smith, Chris Rock situation at the Oscars, that was definitely like not my best nuanced performance. And so I just want you to know that I learned a lot from that video and moving forward, I'll maintain my nuance, maintain, cause that's just who I am. So hopefully you can see that in this video. Let's begin. If you take it too far, well, you might forget to honor yourself. Luckily, I don't have that problem. Ooh, she seems cool. I may She's being presented as being somebody who's independent, makes her own choices, decides what she likes and doesn't like. And some parents may feel like these characteristics can be a negative. Maybe they can deter children from engaging in the other things that she engages in too, like getting really good grades. And so it seems like even at 13, the personality that they're trying to portray in this main character is independence, but like respectable and responsible independence. And that I think is probably going to be one of the themes of this show. Ready to change the world? So ready. I was born to do this. Let's burn this place to the ground! There's a couple things that I'm already really liking about this movie. The diversity that we see in her friend group. I really appreciate that. I think in a lot of past movies, just childhood movies in general, we haven't seen that in a lot of the main characters or even the side characters. So I love that. You're 10 minutes late. What happened? Are you hurt? Are you hungry? Um, mm, mm, how was school today? Mm. Killed it per usual. The mom shoving the food into her mouth implied a little bit to me, like maybe she doesn't fully listen to everything that May May has to say, but it felt like a very important moment. And it felt like she also found a lot of pride in being told by her mom The ancestors would be so proud. I will be watching to look for other reacts videos from people who are engaged in this specific culture, because that's an important part of this conversation too. And it's just not one that I feel is appropriate for me to comment on. Overall though, as a therapist, I think it seemed really nice to see that she could come together with her mom and bond in this way. He should have listened to his mother and married Ling Yi. Totally. (laughs) Is this your homework? Oh, Uh, oh my. What you put this? What? I continue to see messages in this movie that May May cares about what her parents think. Even when she was like handing the food to her dad and her dad gave that response and she was like happy about it. But the other thing I want to mention here is the lack of boundaries. And I know that a lot of parents often feel like they can just go through whatever they want of their kids' stuff. And, and, and sometimes there's reasons to do that for safety reasons. There are signs that there are mental health issues or substance use issues. It's very important though, that, that there's space and boundaries provided for children from their parents. And privacy also can build trust. And I know that you know some parents will say, oh, well, my kid should just trust me no matter what. But no, trust is earned and it goes both ways. <gasps> what? <laughs> this is so upsetting. I am a mom. I can understand or perceive why a parent would want to go and do something like that. It's love. It's security. It's the feeling of this is what I'm supposed to do to be protecting my child. The problem is, is that even on May May's posters that were on her wall, I believe it said study, work, listen. 
But listen was the last poster. And it feels like May May does a really good job at listening to the people around her as best as she can. And it doesn't seem like she's getting that same respect from her mom. Oh. Wait, is it that? Did the, did the red peony bloom? No! Maybe? <gasps> but it's too soon. Don't too worry, maybe. Okay. The way we introduce these topics to our children, and we should do it before it happens so that it's not so shameful or so scary. It, it is hard to, you know, to find the right way to do it. And it depends on each family, on each culture, on each family system to begin with, and on each child. But in general, I think like freaking the F out is really just gonna make the child freak the F out and may like implement some deeply rooted shame that can last for a while. But we are going to get through this together. I have ibuprofen, vitamin B, a hot water bottle, and pads. Oh, I love this. I loved that they implemented breathing, deep breathing techniques here and calm and engaging in the Zen process, which is a large part of the culture that she's in. That's pretty cool. I really like that. And, and I do want to say that the mother did seem to be doing like the right thing. It would have just been helpful to have this conversation ahead of time. They seem to have a pretty good relationship, the mom and Mamie. <laughs> putting a deodorant on her no, face. You're kind of a perv. I am not a Kids can be so cruel. Oh my god, the mom. This happened already? What did you say? And they passed it to theirs. But over time, our family chose to come to a new world. And what was a blessing became an inconvenience. <laughs> an inconvenience. Uh, why didn't you warn me? I thought I had more time. You're just a child. I thought Here's the I mom's reasoning. Talk, I'd see the signs and be able to prepare. Red is a lucky color. Oh, that was nice of the dad to say red is a lucky color. We need to tell our kids when important milestones are going to be occurring in their life. We want preparation. We want awareness. We want to be able to understand ourselves as human beings. And I can tell that that these parents and that her mom had had her best interest at heart and didn't maybe didn't want to overwhelm her. But what we can see is that there's a disconnect here between the mother understanding that sometimes her actions are affecting her daughter in a negative way, even when she doesn't intend for that to be the case. <sighs> Please. <sighs> Just <sighs> go away. And this is actually a very normal and typical interpretation of what it is like to have your period for the first time. So many emotions, both physical, we feel like our body's changing. We feel like we don't have any control over our emotions. I think that this panda representation, not only because they're diving into a specific type of culture as the basis of the family that they are bringing into this, but also it just, it, it, it really is a good metaphor for how we truly feel. Are you a werewolf? No. <laughs> Are you a werewolf? A I'm You're so fluffy. That's the response she should be getting from her parents oh, too. She's looking to her friends. She's saying the people that I love the most. And often when we say that, we are also implying that those are the people that love us the most. And you can tell that she feels an attachment, an emotional attachment, emotional acceptance, unconditional love from her friends. And she doesn't necessarily feel that with her parents because her parents are saying, we need you to change. Maybe we should trust her. It's them I don't trust. Look at those glittery The dad, maybe we should trust <gasps> her. Gyrations. More so judgments good. from the mom. Where did you get that from? Me, it's your mother. I'm not here. And then the mom's mom calls and the mom doesn't want to talk to the mother at all. Does this happen generationally? 
where the mothers don't listen to the daughters. And then there's this separation, this avoidance, this lack of connection. If my child was going to a concert and they could potentially turn into a giant panda. Yeah, I would probably be like, probably not a good idea for you to go right now. But we're going to take it in the context of like controlling her emotions and like maybe her not wanting to go boy crazy. And the mom thinks that that's not something that's possible. I never asked for anything. My whole life I've been her perfect little May May. I never Temple asked duties, for anything. Greens, I've been her perfect May May. Dancing. Yeah. Save me leftovers. What if I come with you? What? what are you doing? Linear equations? Geometry? I have a Dude, the mom needs Look, to give some I can make a space. Wow. But I don't want you to. Way to go, Mamie. Tell the truth. Sometimes it's okay for children to set boundaries with their parents, just like it's okay for parents to set boundaries with their children. 13 year old teenagers are people. They are gaining individuation. They are trying to figure out who they are, what they like, what they love, what they want to be when they're older, what activities they enjoy, the things that they find interesting. If parents are way over the top and helicoptering, and yes, I'm a parent, I understand. There are certain rules, certain guidelines, certain things that we want to teach our children and boundaries that we want to place for our children to keep them safe. She just wants to go to a concert and eat even the things that she's saying with her friends about being this boy crazy are like literal jokes, like little middle school jokes. Like, are you a triangle? Cause you were cute. <laughs> They're being young teenage girls. And to me, that's okay. Oh, she gained weight. She looks like her mother. She looks like her father. Ladies. The elders. Mother. Your mother and I were close once. But the red panda took that away. Oh, I hope this is going to go okay. I feel for everyone in this. You can see the generational ideals being passed down. The grandmother has very strict beliefs about how things should be done and how to maintain the control over this red panda and how to eliminate it, that it needs to be eliminated. Something that the grandma just said may activate something in the mom, like an old pattern of like, if my mom's mad at me and my mom wants me to do something, like I need to do it. <gasps> They showed in the beginning of the movie that she was getting A pluses and like winning awards and stuff. And then in the left corner, I saw other grades. I think I saw some Bs and some Cs. And so her grades are starting to slip. But let me say that sometimes kids, they've found a balance. Like Mei, Mei had a balance in the beginning, right? She had her friend group, things that she liked, like boys and just music. And then she really, really cared about her family traditions. She cared about respect. She cared about her parents thinking positively of her. And there was a good balance there. Then this thing happens, this coming of age, this having a period, first menstruation, first menstrual cycle, the lack of acceptance, like she was accepted from her friends, but not really accepted from her family and more so tied to family and responsibility was school. And so she's probably detaching from that category and that compartmentalization of her life. And I don't believe, which I don't know, this is a movie, but a lot of the times the transition isn't because they care less about those certain situations, but because they can't focus on them because it can be emotionally painful. Especially my mom. All her hopes and dreams are pinned on me. I know, but you have really changed and I'm proud of you. Just one thing to say about what her friends just said in this moment, when one of her friends was like, come on, like you're not the like straight A student that we never used to see. That feels like a little bit of a judgment too. And I think it could have been fair to even for them to ask, how do you feel about like the fact that your grades aren't as good as they are? Like, is that still something that you value? And like, how are you feeling about having the panda? Like, have you considered that you might want to keep it or not? Curiosity open questions, both from parents and from friends, is really the way to truly get to know the human being that you're trying to help. Oh, she wanted to. Don't you blame her. She is a good girl. 
and you've taken advantage of her. Nate, tell her. I think that Mei Mei scared herself with how she acted with the panda. And now she's shifting because as humans, we want to say, is this right or is that right? And they're going to be somewhere in the middle, right? But I think that 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 explosive red panda experience that she had made her feel like, you know, maybe my mom's right. Maybe this is something I should get rid of. Maybe I should stop activating it. The point isn't to push the bad stuff away. It's to make room for it. L live make with it. Make room for the bad stuff. Hey, erase it if you want, but this side of you made me laugh. I love this moment with the dad. The mother's red panda, when she got in a fight with the grandmother over the boy being boy crazy, liking this boy, then there was an attack. Now the grandmother says, make the panda go away. And now the mother is afraid that the daughter is going to hurt somebody in a way that she hurt her mom. Sometimes we do pass down beliefs and perspectives and restrictions on our children because they were placed onto us by our parents. But we didn't even really like those restrictions and they didn't really benefit us in the way that we benefited them or we fully listened to those restrictions. And then later on in life, we're still being affected by the dynamics that were created because we listened. I can understand from a cultural perspective, the benefits of adhering to certain traditions and beliefs. But at the same time, it can cause interpersonal conflict. It can cause isolation away from things that we find important. And this cognitive dissonance between what we are told to believe, but then what we actually feel can be a very difficult place to reside in and can actually cause a decrease in the productivity or happiness in our life, which we saw with Mei Mei's grades, for example, her pulling away from her friends, for example, and her reuniting with her family. But feeling sad. So this interaction with her dad was really nice. And some clarity was finally provided. A family story was finally told that honestly should have been told before we got here. I absolutely love that they are showing all of these cultural references. For so long, Disney movies were just either really poorly portrayed, like, Pocahontas, or just totally white. Aww. I'm keeping it. What did she say? Keeping I'm it. I'm keeping it. it. Mimi, stop it! Oh, what are you stop doing? It. I'm going to the concert. Her Get mom's necklace here. broke too. How could she? Oh no. Panda's a part of me, and you guys are too. May, the panda's a part of me, of and you guys are too. I know, and I'm sorry. I've been like obsessed with my mom's approval my whole life. I couldn't take losing it. <laughs> Your mom must have gone nuclear. Who cares? What's she gonna do? Ground me? <laughs> <laughs> so this part, I feel like, is something that parents may be getting upset about as well, which is like. Oh, I broke the rules. I left. I basically snuck out. I did something that my parents told me not to do. And I don't really care what the repercussions are. We can't blanket that. There are times when if kids are not listening to what their parents are saying, that they could be at risk. They could be in danger. And they could be taking away from the trust that the parents have for them also. At the same time, I think that parents who blanketly say, if you do not listen to me, you will be punished is ridiculous. Ridiculing and punishing children for natural human behaviors is not going to stop them from being a human being. Yes, you can teach them respect. Kids should respect their parents. But at the same time, it's these very, very rigid ways of looking at parenting, even taking culture out of it, just rigidity in general within a household doesn't leave room for individual differences and for each family member as they're growing up or even as they're adult as they continue to change who they are what they believe who they want to be with what they like it just doesn't leave room for that nuance 
the foundation of being able to trust ourselves starts from when we're three. And of course, don't touch the hot stove. Like that's something that they need to listen to, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is just parenting should have a level of flexibility that allows the child to grow up to be the adult, the human that they want to be. Okay, but really though, why is it four time when there's five of them? <laughs> just curious. Oh. Uh. Put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. This isn't you. This isn't you. A very interesting metaphor for family dynamics and family arguments. I never went to concerts. I put my family first. I never went to concerts. I put my family first. Because I did it, you have to do it. And the thing is, is it doesn't seem like that worked out 100% the way the mom wanted it to work out. So why is her mom trying to expose her to the same thing that didn't actually bring her as much joy as she thought that it would? So in essence, whatever those negative emotions were that the mom experienced when she had to get rid of her red panda, she's like, well, you just have to deal with it too. Also, let me just say, no physical violence. There should be no physical violence from children onto parents or parents onto children. These are pandas fighting in a Disney movie, but it must be said. The grandma. They're all singing it. Let's have the moment. Let's have the moment. I'm oh. sorry. It's, it's all my fault. This makes what me so I, sad. I, I hurt her. Generational inner conflict passed down and unintentionally, unconsciously acting the same way as people treated you. Oh. Sorry. Family May May's keeping the panda. Just come with me. I'm changing, Mom. I'm yeah, finally I'm figuring out who I am. But I'm scared it'll take me away from you. You try to make everyone happy, <laughs> but are so hard on yourself. And if I taught you that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The farther you go, the prouder I'll be. I love that. <sighs> this thing's hungry all the time. Aww. Eat up, little one. Okay, Engaging so in the culture one. together what? still. Had to the mom in leaning into the you should see into Maymay's culture. <laughs> mom. <laughs> I'll be back Yay! before dinner. Okay? Fine. When we repair our deeply rooted emotional stuff, we can be more interactive, more connected, more understanding, more open to new ideas, new beliefs, and, and new ways to have relationships with the people around us and to trust them and yourself. Overall, I thought that this was an excellent movie. Um, it had a lot of really important mental health aspects that I think that it discussed. And after reading the controversies prior to watching this, I understand where they're coming from. And I would still highly recommend this movie. One recommendation that I would have for how to start to initiate this conversation is to one, realize that like 13 years old is like around the time when teenage girls begin to have menstrual cycles. Before they go into that middle grade, that would be a really great time. 
because there's more individuation. They're learning about peers. They're starting to have hormonal changes. You know, at some point over the next couple of years, your body's going to start to go through some changes and they might be a little bit uncomfortable. And you might also feel like you don't want to talk to me about them at all because they're so uncomfortable. But just know that I might check in on you every now and then. And, and of course, I'm kind of expecting you to say, I don't want to talk to you about it. I don't want to talk to you about it. But just know that I won't judge you. I'll respect you. And I've been through it too. Or you're somebody that doesn't experience menstrual cycles. You can say something like, I I'm going to know how to be able to help you and to respond in a non judgmental way. And then, you know, do your research so that you know, or get a family member or a friend or somebody that they're super comfortable with because it's a very uncomfortable situation. I think that could be a really great place to start. And I also think that it would be very appropriate around this age to start to explain what is a tampon, what is a pad, like just the things that would be necessary to discuss when it comes to menstruation. I think that this movie was great. I really, truly think it was great. And I want to know what you think about it. Have you ever seen the movie? Are you going to watch it now if you haven't seen it? And if you have seen it, were there any parts that I didn't react to keeping in mind that we try to keep these short so I may have something to say about an area of the movie that didn't get put into this that I would love to answer for you in the comments below. As always, thank you for being here and I am glad that you exist.